If I had a nickel for every time that I've done a video on Robert F. Kennedy Jr., I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but I swear that it's happened twice. Seriously, what the heck? Welcome everybody to JG9 News, where we talk all things NFL all the time. I'm Jower Gary and I representing the 904 from the 602, and today, we don't have free agency news, we have presidential news. Because according to a report by the New York Times, Aaron Rodgers, the Green Bay Packers quarterback that got traded to the New York Jets, played basically four snaps with the team before getting injured and has made tons of headlines since. Rodgers is going to potentially be the vice presidential candidate to Robert F. Kennedy Jr. running as an independent. This according to a report from the New York Times, which says... Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has recently approached the NFL quarterback Aaron Rodgers about serving as his running mate on an independent presidential ticket and has welcomed the overture. Two people familiar with the discussion said, Mr. Kennedy confirmed on Tuesday that the two men were at the top of his list, the other one being former Minnesota governor and wrestler Jesse Madura. It is not clear if either has been formally offered the post, and Mr. Kennedy is still considering a short list of potential candidates but he has been talking with Rodgers for the past month and seems pretty receptive to the idea. Now, look, there is a history of NFL players being involved in politics. We saw Buffalo Bills quarterback Jack Kemp serve as a member of the United States House of Representatives in New York and then served in George Bush's cabinet in the late 80s and early 90s. You had Wizard White, player on the Steelers and the Lions, who eventually joined the Supreme Court. Alan Page, the Hall of Fame defensive tackle on the Minnesota Vikings and Chicago Bears, eventually joined the Minnesota Supreme Court. There is a history here. Having said that, that's usually after you retire. It's not in the middle of your playing career. So we have to ask, how do we get to this point? And what does this mean for Rodgers going forward in terms of the 2024 season? Does this mean he's going to retire? Can he campaign at the same time that he is playing? Because there's nothing in the CBA that says he can't do that. There's nothing in the CBA that says you can't endorse a political candidate. There's nothing that says you can't run for office. I don't think they ever consider that as a possibility, but who knows? Who knows? Anyways, how it worked was the day that Joe Biden issued the State of the Union last Thursday, Robert F. Kennedy put out a nine-minute video talking about his State of the Union, his plans for the country, how he views the country, and what he wants to see going forward. Aaron Rodgers retweeted that and said, this is presidential. So we knew for a while that Aaron Rodgers endorsed RFK. They had pretty similar viewpoints on a lot of stuff. But I don't think anyone expected Aaron Rodgers to potentially become his vice presidential candidate. Now, you might be wondering, campaign schedule-wise, how the heck would this work? Because Aaron Rodgers, as a quarterback on the New York Jets, has a job. He doesn't get off days. The only off day he has is Tuesday. Can you really only campaign on Tuesday once out of every seven days? Well, amazingly enough, you probably can, considering RFK's schedule, because RFK isn't exactly campaigning a ton as it is. So schedule-wise, this shouldn't be a problem. I looked at his campaign events for the next month. He's only got four. He's only got four events that he personally is going to be at. Now, there's going to be some community events that are run by other people, but in terms of events that RFK is going to be at himself, he's only going to be at four. For some perspective, from March 13th, so tomorrow, to April 18th, the day of the fourth campaign that RFK has on his website. So in that roughly month-long stretch in 2016, Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump had 28 rallies. RFK had four. Trump had 28. Now, obviously, Trump had more funds to work with because candidates tied to a party usually have more funds with uh, working with donors than independents do, especially in the wake of Citizens United. But still, that's a stark difference. Now, RFK, obviously, you would think he's going to ramp it up once we get to general election season. Once we get to August, September, October, you would think he's going to ramp up the campaign schedule a little bit more and do more than one a week. But he's barely doing anything as it is. He's well behind schedule with what Trump was doing in 2016 and what a lot of candidates have been doing around this time. Obviously, 2020, I'm not looking at that just because that was a COVID year and everything was kind of screwed up with that in terms of traveling and in terms of public gatherings and all that. But 2016, Donald Trump had seven times more rallies in that stretch than RFK has had. So RFK is not doing a whole lot as it is. He's not doing a whole lot as it is. On top of that, Aaron Rodgers, likely the Jets are going to play the Jaguars in London this year. 
There was a video that leaked at Wembley Stadium that showed Jets Jaguars as a matchup sometime in October. You think week six, week seven, sometime around middle October. Usually teams get off during their bye week. So you figure Jets play the Jaguars, Jets travel back to New York, Jets have the week off. Rodgers can go heavy on the campaign trail the week right before election season or two weeks before election season. The timing actually works out pretty well there where he can really ramp it up as we get closer and closer to the election in November. But is this the end for Aaron Rodgers? Is he going to retire to do this? I highly doubt it. Like I said, RFK not really campaigning a lot as it is. Aaron Rodgers can probably fit everything into his schedule, show up to the campaign zone Tuesday, do his stuff, and then work out with the team every other day. He's not going to miss practice for this. I don't think the Jets want that distraction. On top of that, Aaron Rodgers, as crazy as the man can be with certain things, according to some people, the man knows his history. He knows his stuff. He hosted Jeopardy. He is one celebrity Jeopardy. He knows his stuff. He knows his history. You think he would give up that money for a campaign that has no chance of winning? He's not stupid. In that regard, he knows that this campaign has no chance of winning. Look, I am 26 years old. I am not old enough to be the president of the United States. I have about as much of a chance at being the president as RFK, and I have as much of a chance at being the vice president as Aaron Rodgers. Because here's the thing. No independent has even so much as got an electoral vote since George Wallace in 1968. And again, that was before Citizens United, when it was a lot easier for independents to make their mark. No independent has gotten 10% of the popular vote since Ross Perot in 1992 before Citizen United was even a thing. But as a reminder, it's not based on the popular vote. It's based on the Electoral College. You have to win states, and no one's won a state since George Wallace in 1968. So long ago that the NFL-AFL merger had not been finalized yet, and so long ago that the New York Jets had not won a Super Bowl. The team he's on right now. On top of that, no president has even so much as come in second place since Teddy Roosevelt in 1912, with the Progressive Party. Look, we know that Donald Trump and Joe Biden in all likelihood are going to be running one, two, Democrat, Republican, no matter which way you want to put it. That's usually what happens. Independents don't come in second place. They don't win. They don't win. Aaron Rodgers knows its history. He has to know he's fighting an uphill battle. So do you think he would want to give up all that money with the New York Jets? All that money, have to give some of that back? Yes, $75 million guaranteed, but he could be making $100 million by the time his Jets contract is done, potentially. On top of that, even though the money is guaranteed, there is precedent to give some of that back. We saw that about 25 years ago with Barry Sanders when he retired from the Detroit Lions. He had to give some of that money back. The Lions sued him, and the Barry Sanders rule is in place as a result. So Aaron Rodgers would have to give up some of that money to retire and join this campaign if that's the route he wants to go, and he would be doing it for a campaign that has 0% chance at winning. A 0% chance at winning. Then again... I don't think Aaron Rodgers would have to change his schedule a whole lot. He would just have to campaign really hard on Tuesdays. I don't know what that means for the Pat McAfee show on Tuesdays, what that means for him in that regard. But in all likelihood, he would campaign on Tuesdays, really campaign during the bye week that the Jets have. But other than that, RFK, I'm not sure he's going to ramp up his schedule as it is. The funds probably aren't there. It just wouldn't be worth the investment considering how far behind he is in the polls and considering the lack of a chance that any independent, any third party, no matter if it's RFK, no matter if it's who, whoever it is, your next door neighbor has at winning the election that's not the Democratic nominee or the Republican nominee. But bizarre news nonetheless, bizarre news. Leave it to Aaron Rodgers to make himself a story during free agency. The Jets have not done a whole lot in free agency as it is. Quiet day yesterday. Today, not so much. Today's been very eventful, just not in the way that I think a lot of Jet fans expected and not in the way that anyone really expected. I don't think anyone saw this announcement on the bingo card, but who knows? What are your thoughts? Do you think Aaron Rodgers will become a vice presidential candidate for RFK Jr.? Will he be on the ticket? I cannot believe that is a real sentence. I cannot believe I have to do a video on that. What are your thoughts on Aaron Rodgers? Do you think he's going to retire from the Jets to do this? Do you think he's just going to modify his schedule a bit during his off days? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Oh my goodness. So that's going to do it for this episode of JG9 News. I don't, I don't even know what just happened. But be sure to like and subscribe. Help us the channel out a lot. Be sure to check out my main channel, Jaguar Gear 9, where we talk all things NFL history all the time. Until next time, this is Jaguar 9 signing off. And as always, go Jags.